All right. In this problem, an engineer is presented with a vertical curve upon which a car accident has recently occurred. The engineer is asked to determine the tangent slope of the road at station 17 plus 00, where the skid marks of a given car began. So in this problem, we're being asked to find a slope at a station in a horizontal, or I'm sorry, in a vertical curve. So if we type in vertical curve into our reference manual to get us started, that's going to take us to chapter five titled transportation, specifically directly to section 5.3.1, symmetrical vertical curve formula. So we're going to use the equations there to solve this problem. The first thing we need to solve for is the rate of change along the horizontal curve. And that term, the rate of vertical curvature, otherwise thought of as the rate of change of grade, is given as k equals l over a. And in this case, k is the rate of vertical change. L is going to be the length of the curve, otherwise known here as the distance between the two stations. And then A is going to be the algebraic difference in grades. So the way we can write this out, oh, I'll write down A really fast. Um, that's going to be G2 minus G1 absolute value. And this is expressed as a percent. G2 in this case is going to be the grade of our forward tangent and grade one is going to be the rate of our backward tangent or back tangent. So let's get started calculating K. That's simply going to be 1900 feet because remember we can rewrite stations in this terminology instead minus 1400 feet over 2.9 minus a negative 2.5%, which is somewhat redundant since this is going to be an absolute value here. Um, and if we solve this out, we can see that our rate of vertical curvature is going to be 92.59. And if we want, we can write this down as feet per percent. I don't know if this is actually the way it's written out in transportation engineering, because that's not my own personal background. But I do find that writing out units in a problem can help you solve, help you remember what you're trying to solve for at the end. So I personally like to do it in this case. So we have found K, the rate of our vertical curvature, from one station to the next, otherwise known as the rate of change to the grade over distance. So what we can do now is find our slope at station 17 plus zero zero. So we can wind up using this exact same equation again and simply solve for a different term. So in this case, G2 is going to be the new term we're solving for since station 17 plus 00, zero is going to be the new term, the new station that we've been given. So in this case, what we can say, since we already solved for K, we can say 92.59 feet per percent equals 1700 feet minus 1400 feet over G2 is now the grade that we're solving for minus negative 2.5 and down here that's going to be a percent absolute value so if we write this out we could solve for this algebraically and say 92.59 feet 
over percent times term G2 plus, since negatives, two negatives here is going to give us a positive, we multiply those two terms together. We're going to get 231.48 feet over percent times percent, so just feet equals 300 feet on the other side. So we can see that we can subtract these because the units work out. So that's going to give us 92.59 feet over percent equals 68.52 feet. And if we were to divide now to, oh, I forgot to add term G2 in here. Um, so if we were to isolate G2 now, we will get G2 equals 0 0.74 feet over feet over percent, which is really just percent. So the answer to our problem is the second answer here. And that's all it takes to solve this problem. One more thing I want to point out is that there is technically a second way to solve this, this problem uh, using some additional information that's provided in the reference manual. So I don't use it because it's not explicitly called out as clearly and it, it relies on the fact that you know that the derivative of an elevation is a slope. So again, I think the first way is easier to use, but let's go through the second way and just in case it makes more sense for some of you. So in the same part of the reference manual where we got our previous equations, you'll see that there is a curve elevation equation provided, and I can write that out here. So it's given as y point of vertical curve plus g1 times x plus a times x squared. Now, in this case, a is also given in the equation in the handbook as g2 minus g1 over 2l. So to use this equation in, in this problem, again, we have to know that the derivative of elevation is a slope. And that's not explicitly called out in the reference manual. So that's just something to be aware of. That being said, let's see what happens when we take the derivative of this formula. So the first thing that we'd see is, well, we can rewrite it over here first. Y P V C plus g1 times x plus, we'll combine these two parts now, g2 minus g1 over 2l times x squared. So if we were to take the derivative of this, first we'll see that This term is gone, and x will be derived away, leaving us just with g1, and this x squared would become 2 times g2 minus g1 over 2l times x. And both of these twos would cancel, 
leaving us with only take us down a little more. Y prime equals G one plus G two minus G one times X. And I forgot to mention that X as called out in the reference manual here is going to be your horizontal distance from your point of vertical curvature to the point on the curve that you're interested in. So again, in our case, that's going to be 1700 minus the equation, the first point, which was 1400. So y prime equals negative point zero two five. So in this equation, these are expressed as decimals rather than the full percent plus zero point zero two nine minus a negative zero point zero two five. These are the grades from given above over nineteen hundred plus subtracted from fourteen hundred, sorry, fourteen hundred subtracted from nineteen hundred. And X is going to be like we just said, the distance from the PVC to the point on the curve. So that's going to be 1700 minus 1400. And if we were to solve all of this out, you get 0 0.0074 or 0.74%. So this might feel like a faster way to solve the problem but you do have to inherently understand and remember that the derivative of the curve elevation formula will give you slope. And that's not something that's explicitly called out in the reference manual, or if it is, I missed it myself when I looked through it. But yeah, that's the alternative way to solve this problem. If you don't want to do it that way, there's always the original that we did here. And that should be it for this problem.